Welcome to the second of our two tutorials on tape delay. As we now know, the five primary parameters of time domain effects are delay time, feedback, modulation speed, modulation width, and finally, high frequency decay. The first parameter of time domain effects is delay time. To create the delay, the tape recorder is put into record mode and recording begins. Note that the recorder must be set to monitor the delayed recorded signal from the reproduction head and not be in input monitor mode. The first generation copied signal enters the tape machine and travels to the record head where it is recorded to tape. The tape then travels to the reproduction head which replays the signal and outputs and sends it back to the return channel on the mixer. The delay time can be controlled by setting the speed of the tape with a vary speed control. This control may also be called the speed or pitch control. The second parameter is feedback. Feedback is achieved by creating a second generation copy of the first generation copy and sending it back to the record head again. This is achieved by simply using the same auxiliary send bus on the return channel as that used on the source signal input channel. Whenever a new generation copy is made, some quality is lost due to the electromagnetic and mechanical inefficiencies of the tape recording process. Interestingly, this is most apparent in the loss of high frequencies, thus emulating the way that echoes behave in a real space. To create a modulated effect, the tape recorder's speed control must be rotated backwards and forwards for as long as the effect is required. Doing so introduces variations into the delay time and the pitch of the copied signal. If the speed is increased after the signal has been recorded but before it is replayed, the pitch of the copied signal rises. If the speed is decreased, the pitch falls. Solid state analog, digital hardware, and software delay plugins usually employ a programmable LFO to simulate the movement of an engineer's hand on the vary speed control. The LFO creates a modulating control signal that can be sent to modulate pitch and delay time. The speed with which the vary speed control is rotated determines the setting of the modulation speed parameter. The speed will be slow for a phasing effect and fast for a deep flanging effect. Modulation speed is also known as modulation rate and modulation frequency. The modulation width parameter is determined by how far the vary speed control is rotated. Greater degrees of rotation will create deeper effects. Modulation width is also known as modulation intensity, modulation depth, and modulation amount. When a sound reflects around a space, such as a room, its high frequencies are absorbed faster than its low frequencies. This causes the echoes to become increasingly duller. The process of recording a sound to tape 
and then feeding it back to be recorded again mimics the behaviour and character of echoes in a room, including the way in which high harmonic frequencies decay faster than low frequencies. This is due to the electromechanical inefficiencies of the recording process. Digital delay lines create repeating effects by sampling a source signal and then replaying it repeatedly according to the feedback control setting. They therefore do not deteriorate in quality. To simulate natural and tape echo high frequency decay, they usually provide a low pass high cut filter which can be applied to the copies. High frequency decay is also known as high frequency damping or high cut. The script for this tutorial, along with accompanying images, can be found at our website projectstudiohandbook.com. We suggest you subscribe at our YouTube channel and join our mailing list at our website to receive notification of new videos, blog posts and subscriber only extras. Thanks for watching.